Hey everyone, the US election is finally over and the likes of the BBC are shocked as if nobody saw Trump winning, and when he did. The writing was on the wall, frankly, when Trump played a packed house in New York, of all places, which was instantly compared, of course, to something that the Nazis would have done in the 1930s. If it was something like Hitler would have done, then it was certainly the most racially diverse and pro-Israel fascist rally I've ever seen. And if playing Madison Square Gardens makes you a fascist, I guess I've been misunderstanding all those Billy Joel songs all these years. Another major sign of what was coming was when the Amish, a group that don't normally take part in elections, decided to all come out for Trump in a swing state after the US government decided that they'd have to start using electricity and modern production methods if they wanted to own farms and not be raided by the federal government. Overall, though, nobody should really be surprised that Kamala Harris didn't do very well with voters. Last time she ran in the primary four years ago, she was a drunken fool that did abysmally and was one of the first to be forced to drop out of the race. Then having been given a diversity hire job as vice president, she still wasn't popular, presiding over the immigration crisis and seemingly proud of the economic mess that she oversaw. Then after Biden stepped down, she was crowned a candidate, without having to take part in a primary after she quickly realised that she'd lose quite badly to someone like Gavin Newsom. Then she spent several weeks refusing to discuss actual policies or explain anything it should actually do, all whilst cackling like a dementia full and being unable to give basic interviews without extreme editing and earpieces. Then he decided to run with the campaign that if you don't think an ethnic minority woman should get a turn as president, you're a fascist, as well as promoting the Project 25 stuff, which is basically the left wing's version of the QAnon conspiracies. I think the best part was probably when Obama and some others told a mostly Muslim crowd in Michigan that they should vote for the pro-Israel candidate and warned them that Trump might support the Palestinians. In the end, it all concluded with a discussion on CNN comparing this year to four years ago and a map showing that Kamala had failed to outperform Biden in literally every single county in the country, not even one of them. Then the panel proceeded to sit there speechless and unable to comprehend why shouting at people hadn't worked or why the working class seemingly thought that their job and the cost of petrol should take priority over the rights of prisoners to get state-funded sex changes, something that Kamala supported along with flooding the job market with immigrant labourers to keep wages low, yet another thing she refused to deny when pressed by concerned interviewers. Eventually, the echo chamber at CNN got to the point of calling black people, quote, white supremacists, thus concluding an election that was probably written by a comedy writing team of Armando Anunci and Chris Morris. Anyway, see you in a week and a bit. If you like these, click subscribe.